All right, welcome on into the Wolverine TV. I'm Clayton Safey with Chris Ballas and Austin Fox here We're from the Wolverine.com. You can use the promo code Blue60 over there for 60 days of our premium content for free. Do the free trial there. We're presented by Lewis Jewelers and Manscaped. Uh, we're going to get into a couple topics here. We'll start with football. Steve Klinkscale. Wait a minute. What yep. the hell is this guy doing here? I thought he quit. <laughs> I thought <laughs> Yeah, so we're also going to still with us. Yeah, we're going to say farewell to Austin Fox as well, who is leaving us for another job. Uh, he got processed. I, I saw a couple people say not true. Um, obviously, we would love to keep Austin Fox, so we'll give him a farewell too. We'll talk Steve Klinkscale. We'll also talk about Michigan basketball's number one recruiting class that uh, is officially, officially, officially number one now. Nobody can pass them in the rivals' rankings. Those are done. Uh, Musa Diabate, who was a four-star, five-star on every other network, is now a five-star on Rivals as well, so we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, Austin, you get the first word on Steve Klinkscale uh, coming to Michigan now that that's official, the defensive passing game coordinator and D-backs coach. A good hire, in, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's a great hire. This whole situation after Mo Linguist left worked out, I think, as well as it possibly could have for Jim Harbaugh in this Michigan football program. Uh, I think some people view Mo Linguist as a slightly better recruiter, but I think it's really close when you compare the two. You look at the success that Klingscale had at Kentucky, and he had a lot of success recruiting, and he's actually slightly familiar already with the state of Michigan. Kentucky did a lot of their recruiting in southeast Michigan over the last several years, specifically the Oak Park area. So Klingscale already has some of those ties to the state. You look at his coaching resume, and it's extremely impressive. He was at Kentucky from... 2016 to 2020 and in 2019 uh kentucky finished with the number two pass defense in the entire country and clink scale sure enough was their defensive backs coach the year before that in 2018 they finished with the number 18 pass defense in the entire country so he has a long resume of coaching up defensive backs to play at a high level back at cincinnati in 2013 his first year on the job they finished number 29 in the country. He was cornerback's coach at Illinois in 2012, and they finished with the number 19 pass defense in the country. So, again, his resume is a long and impressive one from a coaching defensive back standpoint, and that's one area that Michigan really needs to shore up in 2021 after how poorly their defensive backs played last year. There's some talent back there. Brad Hawkins and Daxton Hill specifically at safety. I know Ron Bellamy is going to be the guy coaching them up, but – I think Kling Scale's uh, presence is going to pay dividends right off the bat for this Michigan secondary next year. I like that we're letting fans now chime in here and uh, giving them a voice. And uh, not bad, you know, for, for a fan in his first effort. So it's funny. He kind of looks like Carlton from Fresh Prince right there in that picture at first glance. Am I wrong? I don't know. But uh, I, I would agree 100% that it's a great hire. And what we said after Linguist left, it's like, okay, in order to avoid the, the narrative that nobody wants to stay here and so on and so forth, even though it, he went to a head coaching job, Maurice Linguist, uh, Jim Harbaugh had to make a splash, and that's exactly what he did with Clink Scale. I like him better as a coach, I'll be honest, I think, uh, than I did Linguist. Linguist has been around a number of different places, and from what we'd heard, um, it was kind of, you know, really getting to know these guys in the spring, you know, there were some things to learn and, uh, and it wasn't as easy as some of the guys hoped it would be. So you're hoping that clink scale who really from, in speaking with the Kentucky writers loves all of his defensive backs to be able to cover, starts them out all his corners so that they can get better in coverage and really learn the skills that are necessary there. Uh, the safeties need to cover too, obviously. So I think this is a great hire. And of course, none of it matters. We were saying the same thing about, you know, Josh Gaddis when, before we really knew about his resume and what he'd done and, you know, wow, he really made a splash. It's not about winning the hire. It's about winning games. And it remains to be seen what Steve will bring to that end, but I really have high hopes for him. I think he's a great coach. Yeah, and all we can do right now until they actually play games is, you know, look at a guy's resume, look at, you know, the way that he connects with recruits, uh, you know, his track record in all those areas. And by all accounts in those areas, uh, he's a very good hire. Again, we have to wait and see what's on the field. What do you guys think about what's in the cornerback's room for him to work with? Obviously, he'll have a hand in all the defensive backs and the defensive pass game. 
Um, and obviously, I, I'm interested to hear more about what exactly those responsibilities are going to be specifically. Um, Jim Harbaugh said when, when he had his one spring press conference uh, talking about Mo Linguist, who was the co-defensive coordinator uh, for, in the secondary coach, so a little bit of a different title, but he said basically that he's going to be in charge of coordinating the back end of the defense. So obviously it's Mike McDonald's show, but a uh, huge hand there. Steve Klingskill, maybe not as much responsibility, but still a lot. Um, he's got, you know, Jamon Green, who I think is probably the best corner at this point, and then Vince Gray, DJ Turner, uh, you know, battling as well. What do you guys think the ceiling is, I guess, for this group this season uh, once Klingskill actually is able to work with them? I'll go first this time, Austin. It's a little nerve wracking to me. I'll be honest. Uh, I go back to the early nineties before your time. And when they were putting guys like Woody Hankins, with all due respect, a, a converted running back, smaller guy in the secondary, and they were getting torched. And uh, after watching Vince Gray last year, you know, you never really thought he was a number one corner, regardless of what Don Brown said about him being a future NFL guy. You know, he's a great against the run, you know, um, in coverage, leaves a little bit to be desired and and that was proven last year and he was put in some bad positions frankly and I didn't think that was Mike Zordich's fault I just think that was a a, pro, a product of the scheme and uh probably not fair to the kid so and Jamon Green as well is I mean he was better than I expected him to be you know but the bar wasn't very high I'll be honest because you're thinking okay is it going to be DJ Turner is it going to be Jalen Perry these are a couple of guys to me I think DJ Turner had a pretty good spring from what we've heard, he had a uh, minor knee injury in the spring game, but is a guy that I think could really rise up and has some upside where he can be really good. Andre Selden is small, uh, and it sounds like he's sticking it out. His dad went on Twitter and said, hey, any rumors about him leaving are have been you know debunked. So um, that, I think, is another one, especially in the slot with his quick – quick twitch at his hips and everything else that can be pretty good. And with his attitude, I like that about him. And he had a good spring from what we understand. So I, I don't think the bar is very high, but the problem is guys, is that these guys, you know, they're going to be playing a lot more zone and it's a good thing, but you don't have the front seven in front of them. Like those early nineties teams did where guys are getting to the quarterback and, and good linebackers and guys that were okay. You can cover those guys up a little bit. It's going to take one hell of an effort for these guys to produce a, a plus performance in the secondary. The good news is they've got great safeties, in my opinion, Hawkins being experienced, and then Dax Hill, who I think is going to be a stud, and can play some corner as well. So there are bodies there. I'm not convinced that your starting duo as of today, Jamon Green and, and uh, Vince Gray, would be among the top like six, seven pairs in the Big Ten. Yeah, the corner play obviously struggled mightily last year, but like, Chris said the lack of a pass rush played a big factor in that. It was non-existent for much of the year, even when Quiddy Pay and Aiden Hutchinson were both healthy and Don Brown putting his corners in not great positions obviously played a pretty big factor as well. If Vince Gray is your number one, that's obviously not ideal. I think Jamon Green probably is the best corner on the roster at this point. Uh, I think he really improved as last season went on. He actually finished tied as the Big Ten's leader in pass breakups. So that actually shows that he was at least around the ball more often than not. He tied with Greg Newsom of Northwestern, who I believe was a first-round draft pick this year. So I think Jamon Green has quite a bit of potential. We'll see if Vince Gray gets better. And I think there is talent in the depth chart. Uh, DJ Turner is a guy as a redshirt freshman who has been talked a lot about by both teammates and coaches. Uh, he had a heck of an offer list out of high school, so he's obviously talented. Jalen Perry is another guy who's seen the field a little bit, uh, specifically last year against MSU in that Halloween loss. So I think there is a, a, at least some talent to work with. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. And I think one positive is that the group has nowhere to go but up. So I'm definitely expecting them to improve in 2021. But I think the real question is uh, how much better can they get at this point? I hate to say this, but one of the reasons why Jamon Green was leading the Big Ten in pass breakups is, because, you know, he was getting picked on quite a bit, yeah, um, as well. But, but no, I mean, he showed some flashes. There were some good plays, and again, he had a lot of opportunity because guys were going after him, and rightfully so. When there is no pass rush, and you can get uh, a throw off down the field to a guy in one on one coverage. So, but uh, yeah, they got to improve. And, and I think, Chris, your point about playing more zone is huge because it's not all going to be on the corner's shoulders, even if there is no pass rush for the sake yeah. of argument. 
um, you know, it's going to be more of a collective effort with those safeties, which, like you said, are kind of a strength of that defense. I'd put them, pro- you know, definitely as the top position group on that defense if you want to go with safeties as just a position group. Um, you know, so that's going to be big. I think that it's going to be a lot about Steve Klingscale, Mike McDonald, and the rest of those guys scheming things up to understand, hey, this is the group we have. How can we win with this group? Uh, and that's going to be big, and he's going to have to go to work here to uh, make sure that that happens come the fall. You know, what's interesting is that in putting together the the top five players on this team uh, for the football preview issue, three of them are on defense. And we talk about the defense and how what a concern it is. But you look at Aiden Hutchinson, you look at Hawkins, you look at Dax Hill, who's going to be a star. Uh, he was a freak in the spring game. Uh, I saw a couple of clips that somebody showed me. This guy has the potential to be an absolute star and should be an all Big Ten player. Who knows if it'll be his last year in a Michigan uniform, you know, but uh, these guys are just in, in too much of a hurry to leave. But if I'll tell you what, if he plays extremely well, you know, and the first round money is there, then you go. So, but that's the interesting part of all of this is that, hey, there are some pieces, but it really all comes down to position groups that really matter, like the defensive line and the, and the linebackers. And you're worried about those groups and you're wondering why they haven't gotten more help in the portal. And, uh, you know, you got a thousand guys or something like that in there. I don't know what it is, but it's crazy. You would think that there'd be a couple of guys out there that could help them and they need it flat out. So, but uh, you know what, again, back to clink scale, uh, I just think, I think he and Bellamy already have a, Ron Bellamy already have a relationship there. Uh, they know each other from recruiting in the state and clink scale would recruit his kids. I love that combination. I love, honestly, Everybody's talking about how pessimistic people are on the fort and everything. I love the young coaching staff and the hires that he made. McDonald is a question mark because we don't you know anything about him uh, having run a defense before. Uh, and you can kind of say, you kind of compare it to the Gaddis hire, right? Uh, when he didn't really have the, the experience of coordinating a defense and calling plays. But I can tell you this, Hart, Bellamy, Klink scale, uh, those are some great additions. I'm probably missing one or two. But those are the three that really excite you for the future. I think Harbaugh really made an effort this offseason when he revamped his coaching staff to bring in coaches who are excellent recruiters. This isn't a jab at any of the past coaches, but guys like Mike Zordich and Don Brown come to mind right away as guys who weren't necessarily elite recruiters. And again, I think Harbaugh mm-hmm. brought in guys who are clink scale, obviously, fits the bill to a T. I think Mike Hart's going to be a really good recruiter here. We've seen Ron Bellamy already pay dividends on the recruiting trail. And obviously, he got a lot younger. Zordich, Warner, Brown were all older guys. And now he, again, he revamped it and brought in guys who are younger and guys who recruits are going to click with. So, again, in that regard, Steve Klinkscale uh, fits that description to a T. So, the recruiting trail, I think, is right away one area that we're going to see his higher pay dividends. I'm going to tell you, I think Dan, I think Don Brown was a really good recruiter, uh, especially, I mean, you look at Zach Zinter, you look at Quiddy Pay. Uh, Josh Uche, I think, was one of his guys, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that was before him, but I think he was responsible for that one when he first came in. There were quite a few guys, so that's the only reason I'm going to disagree with you on that one. But uh, but point taken, though, in terms of these guys are, are all outstanding recruiters, um, you know, and, and having Hart and Bellamy, guys that actually played here and want so much for – the success of the program get back to the championship ways that they that they learned and, and experienced I think is huge yeah I think it, it's interesting to look at who Jim Harbaugh brought in because now it's seven guys this offseason it was six Mo Linguist gone so it, you know it's still six new faces now on the coaching staff but recruiting has been something that everyone's talked about this guy's a great recruiter this guy's a great recruiter but the time is kind of ticking right now for Jim Harbaugh and this program to win immediately so it's it's interesting that he went that route. I think it makes sense. But, Chris, you've talked about this a few times where Urban Meyer has said you can't have a weak link in either talent development or recruiting. You want to have it all when you have these yeah. guys. I think Mike Hart is a very good talent developer. We've talked about him before in his track record at Indiana, Western Michigan, Eastern Michigan, uh, you know, Syracuse as well. Um, Steve Klingskell is putting guys in the league at Kentucky, and he made them into one of the better passing defenses in the SEC for a couple of years here and there when he had some of the guys that he was able to develop uh, and sending guys to the NFL. So it, it's going to be important that they develop as well because, frankly, you know, this may sound harsh, but uh, not all of them maybe will be here in a few years if they don't do that right away. It doesn't matter who you have coming down. Um, it, it does matter, but in the sense of winning and keeping your jobs and being here, 
uh, it's got to happen on the field too, right away, as well as recruiting. Yeah. And we wouldn't even be having that conversation had they not just completely, you know, crap the bed last year, if we're being honest, because, yeah. you know, Harbaugh for uh, Harbaugh has had some success here. That's what people don't understand. No, he hasn't beaten Ohio state. No, he hasn't been to the championship game and, and, you know, it should have been, we can argue about that all day. But that is a fact. 2016 team should have been there. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't think that, either of us would disagree with you. <laughs> I would. Have, yeah, exactly. And the 2015 team was, I think, as good as anybody could have hoped. And it was off to he was off to a great start. So, yes, it's gone down a, a little bit. But now, uh, you know, he's going to have a chance. And Ward Manuel has given him had that chance to come back and turn it back around and prove that he's still, you know, one of the better coaches in the game. There's no argument that he was one of the best coaches in football when he was hired here. And uh, he's got to get that back, though. He's got to get that that jackhammer quality back and be a little bit more hands-on, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. But uh, my biggest, you know, obviously the front seven on defense, Mike McDonald's going to not completely get a pass, but, you know, we're not going to be holding him, you know, boy, you better con- you better produce this year or you're out. But on the offensive side, Josh Gaddis has to have a good year. That offense needs to be better, needs to show – um some progress and in year three here otherwise you know what that's something else that's probably gonna have to be addressed yeah i think josh gaddis's unit is perhaps the most that has underachieved in the biggest way during his time at michigan you look at his three years here and very seldom have they played at a high level consistently those final few games of 2019 is really the only time they did in november when they put 44 on msu and 39 at Indiana on a good uh, defense that year, and even 27 on an elite Ohio State defense that year as well. So, And he's had the talent. More often than not, the talent has been in place, and the unit has not produced. There's obviously some question marks on offense this year, but there's still a decent amount of talent in place at several positions. The running backs should be strong with Haskins, Quorum, and Edwards. You have some talent at receiver with veteran and Ronnie Bell, Cornelius Johnson, Mike Sainer stills played a lot of football here. So, and again, even Cade McNamara at quarterback, uh, he's got a lot of potential. He hasn't played much, but there's no reason this offense should be underachieving the way it has, specifically the way it did last year. So, I think Josh Gaddis is perhaps the assistant coach with the most heat on him and the guy who has to produce the most or at the highest level next season. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Um, shall we uh, get into basketball, the new uh, recruiting rankings here? Absolutely. Let's do it. Sounds good. Before we do, though, support for this show is brought to you by Manscaped, which is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, including the three of us. We have an exclusive offer for our viewers, 20% off plus free shipping with the code 20 go blue at manscaped.com 20goblue at manscaped.com Austin we need you to send your package that they gave us for free uh, back to us now that you're leaving unless it's been <laughs> used and then you can keep true. it I, I was going to say I don't think you guys want it after <laughs> All right, that's I, true. That's it's true. Been used. I used the yeah. line last week on the show that it's the total package I'm not going to use that line again But you know what? It's true. The shirt, you get a shirt in it. It's incredibly comfortable. I think Ballas has actually worn it a few times on the show. So there's a lot of goodies inside, and I would highly recommend anyone who takes their personal hygiene seriously to uh, sign up and try it out. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Said it all. Yep. Your balls will thank you. I just, yeah. That's That's their slogan. Yeah. (laughs) So. So, Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk Michigan basketball recruiting this number one class uh, stamped now by rivals as the, you know, winning the recruiting title, quote unquote. Um, You see the names there on the screen. Five star Caleb Houston, five star Musa Diabate, who got that bump. Four star Kobe Bufkin, four star point guard Frankie Collins, four star Isaiah Barnes, who might be a forgotten guy in this class. And then three star Will Cheddar who also is going to be a guy I think who's going to fly under the radar. But at the same time, we talk about him a lot as a guy who's going to be a glue guy to this class. Uh, they are number one. Musa Diabate gets the bump. What do you guys think? I spoke with uh, both Sadi Washington and Phil Martelli last week for the basketball recruiting issue, and they raved about all of these guys. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I still don't know what Musa Diabate averaged at, uh, at my, uh, IMG. Do you? 
I mean, I can't find the numbers and they're pretty good about that because they are all about preaching team. Right. And uh, they don't want, it's kind of like Jawan Howard in Michigan. We don't care where the points come from. We just want our guys to, to score and to win and they all want to win. So I would really like to know what his numbers were. And, uh, you know, I've found games where he scored in, in single digits. I've found score, games where he scored in, in double figures and had, you know, double doubles. But I don't really know if the consistency's there. And you know what? He's just scratching the surface of his potential. And that's why. Because uh, this is a guy who is a freak athlete, uh, really wants to learn. We've never gotten him on the phone. And I don't know of anybody else who has either. He doesn't answer the phone. What Martelli told me, he said... He said, this kid, I couldn't get a hold of him. He was always in the gym. So even when I was trying to talk to him, he said, don't take it personally. This kid is always in the gym. So, uh, but I love that about him and uh, that he's not out there, you know, promoting himself. And, and for the most part, all of these kids, it's the same. I can't think of one of these kids that went out there on social media, look at me, look at me, look at me. And that's what kind of differentiates them from a lot of these other guys. Caleb Houston is one of the most down-to-earth kids I've ever spoken with, especially for a five-star. You would never know it in speaking with him. I had to get him and interrupt him. from doing, He was doing a project, and he was 20 minutes late calling me because he was um, he was doing work. So Kobe Bufkin, great kid. Frankie Collins, uh, I can't say enough about him. And I'm telling you, that's the guy – that I think is going to have an unbelievable impact on this program with the ball in his hands. You know, he's got that sec speed. If he gets his jump shot to where it should be, uh, that kid is going to be dynamite his, and he works his butt off on his vertical. Everybody's seen the, everybody has seen the highlights of him dunking and everything dunking over people. He said, man, I will put, I put the time in with the squats and the calves and everything else. So, but Will Chatter too is another guy that I think in two years, is going to be a staple. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be as a starter or as a backup or what, but, you know, he shoots the ball extremely well for a uh, uh, power forward. He's going to be that stretch four, can put it on the floor a little bit, and this athletic. When he starts getting used to the speed of the competition, which he hasn't had to at, at the Stewartville, uh, where he was played in rural Minnesota, that kid is going to be something else. I spoke with uh, Rivals.com National Director of Basketball Recruiting, Rob Casty, yesterday, who bumped Musa Diabate up to a five-star, and he said the reason for the jump was that this kid is so elite defensively. He's an elite shot blocker, and he's an elite rebounder. He said he's not the best defensive player in this 2021 class. He said that nod has to go to seven-foot center Chet Holmgren, the number one player in the country. But he said Diabate might be number two on that list, so he's as good – as it gets defensively, this is the first time that Michigan has signed two five stars in the Rivals.com era, and that dates back to 2003. They have four kids in the top 50 nationally Houston, Diabate, Kobe Bufkin, and Frankie Collins. Will Cheddar obviously is the three star of the group, but he's nevertheless rated as a kid in the top 130 nationally. So this class is loaded from top to bottom. Uh, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is the best class. The Michigan program assigned since the Fab Five days. I know the mid to late 90s probably brought in some good ones. Tommy Amaker, I think, signed some pretty darn good ones as well. I was just looking at some of his past classes the other day, and he brought in some huge recruits. Obviously, recruiting rankings are not the end-all, be-all, but it's pretty darn important to bring in talent, and Jawan Howard is doing that at the highest level in the entire country, evidenced by where his class finish at, number one overall nationally. I was looking at the top 10 of the recruiting rankings yesterday once they became official, and not many teams that you consider clean in there other than Michigan, and they're sitting at the top, and that's a testament to the program that Jawan Howard inherited and what he's doing here on the recruiting trail coming in. Um, in, in One speaking, thing I'd, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one thing I'd add is that and Devontae Jones isn't even on that list, and that's a guy True. that's going to contribute for a year, and so think about that. The talent that they're bringing in, and uh, but these guys all just want to win, man. And speaking with all of them, uh, with the exception of Musa, <laughs> I right. wouldn't talk. All these kids uh, just want to win, and uh, I love that. I love that. that. That is exactly what John Beeline looked for, and that's exactly what Juwan Howard is looking for. And man, it's fun. It's fun covering and watching Michigan basketball. Chris, you've talked to a few of these kids. Austin and I have th had this discussion yesterday. Um, because we are comparing this class to the Fab Five in a way, it might be the best class since the Fab Five. We'll see what they do on the court. That's you know, but they can be compared since they're number one class. Um, who would be the coach out of this group? Who's going to coach Michigan in twenty five years out of this group? Because Michigan ended up having a coach out of that Fab Five team. 
That's a great question, man. Um, Thank you. Caleb Houston. Yeah, it is. Caleb Houston could do it. I, I think in a heartbeat if he wanted to. Will Cheddar is another one, I think, who could probably do it. Um, just really, uh, you know, they, they've got the high basketball IQs. Not that the other ones don't, but those are the guys that stand out that are like, okay, man, these guys really know the game inside and out. And, and I, you know, I haven't talked to Isaiah Barnes. I haven't talked to Musa Diabate. I haven't talked to Bufkin. You've talked to Bufkin. He's yeah. another one that doesn't like to talk. You know, and we've spoken with his AAU coaches and, and everything else. But, you know, being from GR right there, we send Clay over there, you know, with uh, uh, on a yeah. mission. We got it done. So, but I really like, uh, I really like all of them. Uh, Frankie Collins, I spoke with, uh, he's another one, man, that is just, uh, yeah, I could, I could see him doing it down the road, but you know what, hopefully, hopefully Jawan Howard's doing this for another, uh, 15, 20 years, at least, you know, you never know the, a lot of these coaches are going into their twilight years now and, and sticking around. Hopefully he doesn't go to the NBA at some point. If he does, it'll be a while yet. Um, but I really hope he doesn't because man, this thing would be really, really good up until even you retire, Clay, uh, and that would be fantastic. Yeah, and maybe Jace or Jet will take over uh, or one yeah. of these kids. But basically, so Austin and I had this discussion. He mentioned Frankie Collins and Will Cheddar. I said Caleb Houston, Frankie Collins, or Will Cheddar. But then I also started naming the other kids. Well, I mean, I could see this kid. We don't know yeah. a lot about. And that's kind of the point in a way. This is an elite class in rankings, but they're also a group that – has super high character, and I think that is awesome for so many Michigan basketball fans as they read our articles that have been coming out and coming out and coming out about these kids that they say, man, that kid sounds like an impressive young man. Yeah, We know what they can do on the court, and we'll see more yeah. of that as it goes forward, but it's going to be another fun group of guys to cover too. Yeah, it is. And just in speaking with Martelli, and he's talking about Juwan, and he said, you know, we don't recruit for Juwan Howard, and he lets us know that we're recruiting for the University of Michigan. The first thing that he told these guys, Saudi Washington told me when he came in was, check, we're, if we all check our egos at the door, we're going to do great things here. But none of these guys are high ego guys that he brought in, and neither is Juwan Howard, obviously which is amazing uh, when you talk about a guy and his personality. And I'll be the first to admit that I wasn't sure about the hire when you're going out and getting a guy with no experience and how often does it really work out. When I was speaking to guys on the national stage, they would say the same thing. They didn't need to do that. They could have gone out and gotten one of the better coaches in America, you know, and kept it going. You know, it, 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 that's something that you do if you haven't had a whole lot of success is you take a risk like that. But it turned out to be, uh, so far, and, and, you know, he's still got stuff to prove. We're not saying that he's the best coach in America, and but I'll say this. He has exceeded all expectations, uh, and in terms of who he is, I don't think that was ever in question. And speaking to the Purdue guys, they said, I've never heard of anybody ever say a bad word about Jawan Howard. And you know what, being nice, you would talk about Frankie Collins. Frankie had met him four times as a little kid growing up in different stages of his life, and Jawan Howard always took the time take a picture and encourage him and talk to him. And guess what? Freaking 15 years later or 14 years later, he lands him as a recruit because that's the kind of guy he is. And uh, just fantastic, man. It's just great all the way around. It's amazing. He's as humble and as down to earth as he is when considering the amount of success that he's had, not only as a player, but also now as a head coach, he obviously hasn't let that success gone to his head and that's not something that a lot of other athletes and coaches around the country can say while speaking with Rob Cassidy yesterday he wrote an article about uh, several of the other top uh, uh, recruits in the country the five stars and where they would have gone if they wouldn't have signed with the schools that they signed with and two other five stars in the country said Michigan was their runner out Matthew Cleveland and Peyton Watson a 6-7 wing going to UCLA and Cleveland also a 6-7 wing going to Florida State so Michigan is right there with so many elite kids around the country. Uh, one also said that Juwan Howard actually still stays in contact with him. I'm not going to say who it was, but that just shows the kind of guy that he is. He builds these relationships. He keeps them. And obviously, I think all six kids that he signed in this class fit that description to a T as well. They all understand the Michigan culture the egoless basketball that the team is going to play. Howard would not have recruited these guys if they didn't understand it. And bringing in kids like that is exactly how you keep this elite culture that he has built going. Yeah, and Tom Izzo finished runner-up for Caleb Swan again. He'll let you know that. He had a couple runner-ups too, but no. But Juwan Howard's also bringing in other elite guys as well uh, that also have that character. Um, 
Austin Fox is leaving us. Uh, Chris, you wrote a great uh, Thursday thoughts yesterday about Austin, kind of, uh, you know, just what a great teammate he's been. Uh, he's helped me a ton coming in here as a, as a young guy, has been, uh, you know, become one of my better friends. Uh, farewell to Austin Fox here. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Clay. Boy, you need to get out more. Now, yeah. see, I got to take one. Last... <laughs> take well, a couple one last, last jabs. Well, we got him for a couple more hours here. Absolutely, so. and that's the best. But the, but that's the fun thing about it is that I pick on him so much, man. But he knows it's uh, it's because I care about him. Is a he's kind of like a little brother, and I mean that in a good way. You know, um, honestly, yeah. I I said in my column, I've never seen you mad, Austin. I bet there were times inside you were probably pissed at me. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but you never said anything and you always took it in stride. But the way he worked and uh, just the kind of teammate he was, I think I put everything in the in the, the column that I wanted to say. And uh, just a great guy, uh, kind of guy that you'd let date your daughter for the most part. And uh, just uh, I just appreciate everything you did, man. Can't wait. I hope that you'll stay in touch. Uh, we're we're going to go out and have a a few bush lights. I'll, I'll choke down one or two of those in your honor here, but uh, in a couple of weeks, but more than anything, man, you got, we got to make sure we stay in touch. And uh, cause yeah, it's like a, it's like a brotherhood we've got here. And uh, you guys, both of you, uh, we can't be more pleased. Strongest staff we had uh, with, with you guys on there. So, uh, and we're taking a hit. We'll try to find a replacement, you know, and some kind of a, you know, we'll go to the, find a monkey at the zoo or something like that that can type, but uh, you know, <laughs> but I uh, really appreciate you, Austin and everything you did. Very well said, man. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, the feeling is mutual. You two have been two of the best coworkers I possibly could have asked for, two of the best friends. Like Chris said, that piece you wrote yesterday was outstanding. Uh, it came from the heart. So again, it was much appreciated. These past four and a half years have flown by, man. I've had some of the best times of my life working with you guys, all the road trips we took, specifically with you, Ballas, and John Morton and the other guys as well. Uh, tons of unforgettable memories, both in work and outside of work. We've had some great times together, so you're not going to get rid of me that easily. Obviously, I'm going to stay in touch. Uh, I'll be on the board giving you guys a hard time on the message board at thewolverine.com. Uh, I look forward to drinking more outstanding bush lights with you guys as well. So, uh, again, everything you guys have said is greatly appreciated, and I could not have asked for better coworkers over the last few years. We are going to need a credit card if you're going to be posting going forward. Uh, you know, nothing's free, buddy, anymore. It's true. Uh, but you do get a better deal if you sign up, uh, I think, $89 for the year. So you might want to consider that option. It's true. Yep. You I start, will th start thinking about that. <laughs> start saving yep. up. and uh, <laughs> Exactly. Take your, take your Bush Light returnables back, and we'll see you at the Wolverine.com before. Yep. I was told I'll need to be a pain uh, subscriber at midnight tonight, so I guess that's when it kicks in. So you'll see me yeah. on the board tomorrow as a as a pain customer like all the others. Yeah, midnight European time. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's well perfect. Said. Well yeah. said. Yet another great ballast joke. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, buddy. That's the perfect way to end it because we can uh, promote the promo code BLUE60 at the Wolverine.com. Austin, you can try us out for 60 days absolutely free with that free trial. Promo code BLUE60 at the Wolverine.com.